Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Azam Khan. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. John Lee says Hong Kong is on the fast track to economic recovery. Two doctors are charged with manslaughter six years after a woman died from acute liver failure. And Michelle Yeoh wins the Golden Globe Best Actress Award. Chief Executive John Lee says Hong Kong is in the fast lane to make up for lost time triggered by COVID, but will return to normality in a safe and orderly manner. His remarks came as participants attended the Asian Financial Forum in person for the first time in three years. Chloe Fung reports. The Asian Financial Forum returned today in its physical form after a two-year COVID-induced absence. More than 2,000 people attended the opening of the two-day event at the Convention and Exhibition Center, while another 3,000 joined online. In his keynote speech, Chief Executive Zhang Li said Hong Kong is already living the theme, which is accelerating transformation, impact, inclusion, innovation. He said the city is moving forward in the fast lane to make up for the time lost because of COVID. Rest assured, we'll go fast in a safe and orderly manner towards our shared goal of everything resuming normal as soon as practicable as possible. Lee said investors and tourists can benefit from the resumption of quarantine-free cross-border travel. He noted that the International Monetary Fund has lowered its growth forecast for this year, but he's confident about Hong Kong's future, citing Beijing's continuing and wide-ranging support. Li pledged to make Hong Kong an international fintech hub and consolidate its status as a global insurance center. In less than two weeks, we will celebrate the Chinese New Year, the year of the rabbit. Rabbits symbolize peace and prosperity, and the world clearly has an acute need of both. I know, too, that rabbits can run and my team and I have a lot of running to do this year. Lee disclosed that he will lead delegations overseas to promote Hong Kong. Financial Services Chief Christopher Hoy said the number of physical participants is 20 percent more than in pre-pandemic times. He added that the listing rules will be optimized to attract more capital. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. Two doctors have been charged with manslaughter over the death of a woman who suffered acute liver failure in 2017. The pair have been suspended from duty, but their case has caused concern among doctors. Joanna Ho reports. Two years ago, Chen Siu Kim and Lam Chi Kwan were found guilty of professional misconduct by the medical council. The doctors had failed to realize when treating Tang Kui Si for kidney problems that she was a carrier of the hepatitis B virus as specified in her medical record and did not prescribe an antiviral drug for her. Tang, who was 44 years old, then suffered acute liver failure and had two liver transplants in 2017. She died four months later. The medical council suspended Lam's license for five months, but suspended the punishment for three years. Chen's license was suspended for three months, with the penalty suspended for 18 months. Police launched the legal action on Monday, six years after Tang died. It was understood that Chen and Lam were charged with manslaughter and will appear in Eastern Magistracy next Monday. Health Chief Lo Cheng Ma was in charge of Tang's transplant operations. He declined to answer reporters' questions, saying legal proceedings have commenced. Medical sector lawmaker David Lam said the prosecution caused panic among doctors. The amount of work is so overwhelming that we do not have enough time for each and every patient. If we have only a few minutes to see our patients, then we cannot really um, review the entire file and have enough time to talk to them and do a proper physical examination at the same time. Alex Lam, chairman of Hong Kong Patients' Voices, is worried that prosecution might prompt public hospital doctors to be conservative in carrying out treatment to avoid medical malpractice.
The hospital authority said the two doctors have been suspended from work, and a panel has been set up to improve the clinical management system. The case will be followed up by the coroner's court. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. Hong Kong has denounced a meeting between Jimmy Lai's legal team and the British government, saying it strongly opposes foreign intervention. This came after the British Prime Minister's spokesman said the media mogul's lawyers met the Minister for Asia yesterday, adding that the Foreign Office has provided support for Lai for some time. The lawyers had sought an urgent meeting with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. The Hong Kong government also dismissed foreign accusations and criticisms against the SAR. Lai has been trying to engage a British barrister for his national security trial. Executive Council convener Regina Ip described his legal team's move as extremely unwise. Neither the central authorities or the Hong Kong government has intervened in the judiciary's decision on the admission of foreign lawyers. Uh, what happened is the NPCSC authorized the chief executive to issue a certificate in respect of admission of foreign lawyers in national security cases. No such certificate has been issued yet, but the uh, improper interference, improper moves uh, by Jimmy Lai's lawyers, I think fully vindicates uh, the central authorities' concerns about national security cases. Police have arrested 16 men for illegal street racing on Chun Kam Road in the New Territories last year. They allegedly exceeded the speed limit twice over, crossed double white lines, and drove on the wrong side of the road in November and December. Officers seized eight cars, five motorcycles, smartphones, and racing suits. Thirteen of the suspects appeared in Fanling Magistry this afternoon for mention. Three others were granted bail earlier while police continued their investigation. The Faculty of Medicine at Hong Kong University has developed a treatment that can cure nearly 50% of patients with inoperable advanced liver cancer. The therapy can reduce the size of a tumor so that surgery can be carried out. Joanna Ho has the story. Currently, about 70% of liver cancer patients in Hong Kong are not eligible for curative surgery for several reasons, such as the large size of the tumor. They have to rely on non-surgical treatment, but only 10% can be fully cured in miracle cases, said Albert Chen, clinical professor in the Department of Surgery at Hong Kong University. In a bid to raise the chance of a complete recovery and the survival rate of these patients, the university's Faculty of Medicine conducted research between 2019 and 2021. The project tested a novel trimodality treatment which combines radiation, regional chemotherapy and immunotherapy on 33 patients. The aim is to reduce the size of a tumor and make it small enough to be removed by surgery within six months. While four of the 33 patients had undergone surgery after the treatment, 14 had their tumors necrotized, which meant the tumors died, and those patients only require regular image-based monitoring. After following up on the patients for two and a half years, it was found that their survival rate exceeded 90 percent, with only mild side effects experienced throughout the process. Around 10% of the patient during receiving immunotherapy, they may develop some uh, immune-related reaction, usually uh, the hepatitis uh, or uh, the skin reaction. Uh, usually when we stop the immunotherapy and then we give uh, the steroid treatment, the patient or the patient recover. The faculty is looking to include more patients after expanding the treatment. It estimates that 400 to 600 patients could benefit every year. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. China has taken more steps against Japanese and South Korean travelers, with Beijing defending its move as legitimate and reasonable. While Tokyo lodged a protest, Seoul said its own curbs have reduced COVID cases among Chinese arrivals by a fifth. Jen Slow reports. Less than 24 hours after announcing the suspension of short-term visas to South Korean and Japanese visitors, Beijing imposed more restrictions in retaliation for curbs introduced by Seoul and Tokyo on Chinese travelers. From today, Beijing stopped issuing visas on arrival for South Koreans and Japanese 
and suspended 72-hour and 144-hour visa-free transit for them in China. After the mainland dropped most COVID curbs, some countries introduced anti-pandemic measures for Chinese travelers. Japan requires those taking direct flights from the mainland to be tested before and after arrival as part of its emergency regulations. Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno said Tokyo doesn't want to affect people's travel, but he condemned China for what he called its highly regrettable decision. He said a protest was lodged through diplomatic channels. South Korea said the COVID positivity rate among Chinese travelers dropped by almost 20 percent after requiring proof of negative PCR tests. Lim suk Yong from Korean Disease Control and Prevention Agency said this proves that its border controls are based on objective and scientific evidence. Jan Slow, HKIBC. Hong Kong stocks have climbed to their highest level in over a year on extended optimism over China's reopening. The Hansang index soared over 350 points at one stage before its gain narrowed. It ended the session half a percentage point higher on 21,436. Coal-related shares headed north after the National Coal Association made proposals to ensure an adequate supply during the Lunar New Year. Mongol mining jumped 10.5 percent and Yanquang Energy soared nearly 9 percent. Pharmaceutical shares saw healthy gains on reports that work on the latest batch of national drug procurement has started. Medical device producers Venus MedTech surged 11.3 percent and Microport rose 8.4 percent. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hansang Index closed up 104 points. Top 10 active stocks, Tencent was up $11.40, and Meituan down $4.50. Ping An was up $2, and AIA Insurance down $0.60. Cents. Forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, the euro is at 8.4, and Canadian dollar at 5.82. Over in Europe, the London FTSE is currently up 47 points. Culture Secretary Kevin Young has praised Michelle Yeoh for her exceptional acting skills after she was named Best Actress at the Golden Globe Awards in Hollywood. Yeoh, who was also congratulated by the government in Malaysia, where she was born, recalled her early days. I remember when I first came to Hollywood. It was a dream come true until I got here because... <laughs> Look at this face. I came here and, said, and was told, you're a minority, and I'm like, no, that's not possible. <laughs> and then someone said to me, you speak English. And then I said, yeah, the flight here was about 13 hours long, so I learned. On the way. <laughs> Yo won the award for her role in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. She launched her showbiz career in Hong Kong in the 1980s in action movies, and later starred in the Oscar-winning drama Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yo is the second Asian actress to win the award after Aquafina in 2020 for the movie The Farewell. On to the weather now. Tomorrow will be mostly cloudy with some rain. The temperature will range between 18 and 21 degrees, becoming slightly warmer on Friday. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Wednesday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Azam Khan. Good night.